2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 6 through 11. Nevertheless, God that comforted those that are cast down, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not by his coming only, but by the consolation wherewith he was comforted in you. When he told us your earnest desire, your mourning, your fervent mind toward me, so that I rejoice the more. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I did not repent. Though I did repent, for I perceived that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were but for a season. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. For behold this selfsame thing, that ye sorrowed after a godly sort. What carelessness it wrought in you, yea, what clearing of yourselves, yea, what indignation, yea, what fear, yea, what vehement desire, yea, what zeal, yea, what revenge. In all things you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. May you please be seated, and may the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the practical application of his holy and righteous word. Amen. This week was a week of people saying that they're sorry. Amen. Today, this week, it was filled with CEOs, athletes, people of all different stripes getting themselves in trouble and saying that they're sorry. Some of the apologies seemed believable, and some of them did not seem believable at all. Some of them seem sincere, and some of them seem fake. Part of life is going to be uh, making apologies, and another part of life is discerning how real the apologies are of people that are in your circle and people that are around you. I shared those videos because it was different types of apologies that we could view and kind of examine and think about. In the script or in the text that we, we just read, the Apostle Paul, he had found that the early Corinthian church were in a situation where they were doing wrong. They had the wrong mindset. They had the wrong frame of mind. They were a divided church. They were a divided team. And he writes to them and he basically says, to get your stuff together. Stop all of this arguing and complaining and convincing. And that was basically the first, the, the, the first Corinthians. He's telling them to stop being divided over your gifts and your talents. Stop backbiting. Stop doing these things. And he says that. He, he says here in the text, I'm almost sorry about making you feel bad. But I'm glad that I wrote it because it seems like it has caused you to change your ways. And it's this beautiful word called repent. Can y'all repeat after me? Can you say repent? Repent. repent. And repent. 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 Amen. That word repentance is said, there's two Hebrew words for it and there's one Greek word for it. There's one named Strong's Age 5162. Nahem. Nahem. It's a Hebrew word which means to grieve or to have a strong desire to change. Amen. The second Hebrew word is the word shuv. Shuv. The Greek word is metanoai. Metanoai. Amen. And metanoai basically means if you're going in one direction, to turn around and go in the other direction. Amen? To have a change of direction. And what Paul points out is that, and what we end up figuring out in life through experiences, is that there are different types of sorry in the world. Amen? There are different types of sorry in the world. There are some people who they sorry, and they sorry about the consequences. They're sorry about, they sorry they got caught. 
And sometimes we've got to begin to ask ourselves when we do wrong. See, one of the things about repentance is kind of, there are some folks who they're so unsorry that when something goes wrong, they don't even realize, oh, something went wrong, it needs to be fixed. Yeah, amen. And sometimes people are so anesthetized to poor performance or poor things happening or things going wrong. They're so used to it that they don't even uh, like, okay, what, what do I need to fix so that this stops happening to me? So one of the thing, one of the first steps to being truly sorry is can you repeat after me? What happened? What happened? Amen. One of the thing, one of the first steps to being sorry is this is not acceptable. Can you repeat this? This yes. is not acceptable. Yes. Not acceptable. See, part of not being really sorry is sometimes we get way too acceptable about things that should be unacceptable. Amen? Way too acceptable, amen, about things that should be unacceptable. You know, we have to go and get to the point of like, okay, how did we even get here? Can you repeat after me? How did we get here? How did we get here? Amen? Now, this ain't got nothing, you know, uh, I, I declare all Thompsons and Marshalls innocent of this. I just saw something at the game, amen? But Thompsons and Marshalls are innocent of everything involved, amen? <laughs> but what I want to say, one of the things I saw at the game is there was a kid who he, you know, they told him, you know, to stay in the game, and then he decided to come out on his own time. And then as he's coming out on his own time, the coach starts publicly yelling and fussing at him. And then as the coach starts publicly fussing at him, he goes, and I hear him tell the coach, F something. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and I'm just like, wait a minute, how, whoa, like, how did we get here? Well, you got a kid who's 12, 13 years old, and no, it was not at your game, Mark, amen? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say, <laughs> it was not at your game, amen? <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that how do we get to the point where you got a kid cursing at the coach, and then you got some coaches who you know, kind of are creating the climate. You see what I'm saying? How you get there? How you get there? Amen. Mark's gonna be like, man, I hope you never come to another game. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. But it wasn't y'all's game. It was not y'all's game. I have declared all Marshalls and Thompsons uh, innocent. Amen. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is how you even get there. Because here's the problem. Before that happens, there's been several things that have happened prior to you so you can even get to that point. Amen. There's several things that have happened before you even get to that point. We have to ask ourselves, man, how did we even get here? What was the climate that was created in order for us to get here? Sometimes true repentance is not a one-step process. Because let's get used, to, let's be honest with ourselves. Sometimes sin is a habit. Sometimes sin is deep. Sometimes bad habits are deeply ingrained within us. And sometimes we have to change the culture in order for us to stop the sin. Sometimes we have to break free of everything that is around us that put us in that environment that makes us so likely to sin. True godly sorrow, sometimes we're going to have to step back and ask ourselves, if I'm truly sorry about this, Am I sorry enough to get organized? Amen. Amen. If I'm truly sorry. See, say, you know, let me give you an give example. You go and you run it late and you disorganize and then you go and you cause your friend to wait five, ten minutes when you sh they shouldn't have had to wait five, ten minutes. And then you go and you say, I'm so sorry. This thing, till you get organized, when your friend had to stop waiting on you for five to ten minutes, you are not sorry. You are lying. You're not sorry. You sorry that you have to look at them while they looking at you and they looking at you like. <laughs> you sorry because you feeling uncomfortable. Uh -huh. That's right. Amen. But you're not sorry enough to change. Amen. You're not sorry. And you know, as I'm saying this, I also think we, I believe that we need to stop saying I'm sorry too much. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All right, because, you know, some, let me give you some prime example. I deliberately did not do this. Sometimes I'm late for my, my is always on time. Sometimes I am late 
for Mama Terry because I'm disorganized. Amen? But I've been getting organized lately. This morning I was late because in the last three days I have taken around 12,000 steps. You see what I'm saying? I've walked way more than I can have imagined. Amen? Because I walked so much, guess what? I was sore this morning. Amen? So I overextended myself. So it was not a bad habit. It was not whatever. So guess what? I was about to go, like I normally do, get in the car. Oh, sorry, I'm there. You see what I'm saying? I ain't, I ain't. You know, now you know. I ain't tell her nothing. I ain't tell her nothing. I said, oh, she, and my mind, I think, hope she understands. Because I'm not going to go and apologize when it was not caused by a bad behavior. It was caused actually by trying to do the right, right thing. thing right. Amen. So I share with you, and sometimes we say, I'm sorry too much. You have to go and sometimes, if you didn't do anything wrong, you could, yes, explain to the person. How you got how this happened. Amen. If you leave, and matter of fact, let's start this as a church policy. If you leave on time and you didn't have any bad habits, and it wasn't because you were messing around or getting Starbucks or whatever else, and you get here late because traffic in this area is the worst in the entire world. Right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And you get here late because traffic is just crazy. Don't say I'm sorry, because you ain't do nothing wrong. You, 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 have, you know, sometimes you can leave here, you leave here at the right time, you're not going to get here on time. That's right. Amen? And if you've done everything you're supposed to do, and you left within the allotted amount of time, don't say you're sorry. Because you didn't do nothing wrong. Sorry to interrupt you. Can I say I'm sorry? Because of a bad habit. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. At least it's not that. Hey, part of, the, part of the change comes from recognizing. Amen. <laughs> I almost hate to mention that because as soon as I mentioned that, y'all's whole table started looking down. <laughs> and I was like, I was not talking about y'all. Amen. Amen. But uh, I declare the marshals and Thompson's all innocent again. Amen. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that we have to go, and if we're really, if we have the godly sorrow, we have to go and ask ourselves how we get here. We have to be sick of actually the, the thing that goes wrong. We have to go and examine and say, how did this thing go wrong? We have to be sick of the status quo enough that I want to fix this. Amen. I want to fix this. Amen. You know what a good sign of someone really being uh, really being godly sorrowful is when they're broken enough where they're being when they are willing to be held accountable. That's when you know you're sorrowful. Amen. Because so many times people do, they they do sin and they and they have a bad habit about something. But guess what? They don't want anybody to know about the bad habit. Amen. And because they don't want anyone to know about the bad habit, they don't want to get better. And they don't tell anybody about it. So they keep doing the same thing over and over again. And they keep doing it in the darkness. And they're not getting any help. And then they keep telling themselves, but here's the thing, if you keep doing it. And you're not getting any, you're not getting any accountability partners, or you don't have any prayer partners, or you don't have, you know, it could be anything from um, a, a, a group similar to Michelle's group, Total Life Changes, or Weight Watchers, or it could be Alcoholics Anonymous, or it could be all these different groups. If you're not willing to be held accountable, if you're not willing to have an accountability partner, you got to ask yourself, am I really sorry? Because mm -hmm. Because I know I've tried to defeat this thing on my own. And if I've tried to defeat it on my own and I keep doing it over and over and over again, somewhere along the line, the cycle has got to tell you that me doing it by myself ain't enough. Amen. Me doing it by myself. That's why the book of James says, confess your faults one to another so that ye may be healed. Because we get better by working together. We get better by working together. Are you sorry? Are you sorry enough to be held accountable? Are you sorry enough to get organized? Oh, here's the thing. Here's a tough one. 